before we start, just a bit about myself. I'm a uh, part-time professional photographer, and uh, I picked up astrophotography around three years ago. Uh, all the information and knowledge I've accumulated has largely been uh, self-taught through astronomy forums or YouTube videos online. And uh, when I got started out with astrophotography, uh, I already had a really firm grasp on photography, so I was really able to dive right into it. So I uh, hope I'll be able to share something interesting with you tonight. The moon is the enemy. Uh, yeah. I'm all about controversial headlines. Uh, so unless you're actually trying to take pictures of the moon, it's uh, generally bad news when it's out. A uh, uh, new moon is really the best to shoot in for astrophotography, as uh, the full moon illuminates the entire sky, and it really it makes it really difficult to see, uh, especially the dim passes. Uh, with the iridium flares, uh, meteors especially, you get a lot of dim meteors. The moon may be an enemy, but there's a good shot of the moon. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Exposure is a faucet. Uh, I can't really take credit for this analogy, I, I just learned about it recently. But uh, I thought this was a very interesting way about uh, thinking about photography and uh, exposure. So we've got Aperture as the size of the tube, so the more water that's let through, obviously you have to have a bigger tube for that. Uh, once the bucket is full, you have a perfect exposure. Uh, the shutter speed is the valve of the faucet, and so that determines uh, how long you're letting water through into the bucket. And ISO is the size of the bucket, so the smaller the bucket is, then the quicker it fills up, and you get a perfect exposure. So we'll go a bit more into depth with these. So this is the raw image, image uh, straight out of my camera and imported into Lightroom. So at the top left, you'll see my settings here, uh, 30 seconds, f8, ac 100. I want to get back a bit of detail in the trees, so I'll go over to the shadows tab, because those are the uh, relative shadows in the picture, they're the darker area. And I can bump that up a bit. And I'll bring back a bit of detail on the trees. Is it actually picking out the details that are there? Or yeah, yeah, and that's why it's great to work it's with It's not imposing anything. No, no, that's why it's great to work with raw data, because your camera is capable of capturing a lot of data, but if you're working with JPEG images, it'll compress it and process it. Okay, so process what, just in general, all of this is what the raw is giving to the computer. Yes. And the program is picking it up in the way yes. But it's there, not yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, something really interesting was uh, something that I actually captured uh, entirely by accident. I was taking a uh, uh, Star Trails shot from my backyard, and I was just flipping through the images, and I saw something moving in the top of the frame. And I figured, okay, well, it's a satellite. But then I went through a couple images, and it was there, and then, it, and then it wasn't, and then it was there again. And uh, so that's what I found. So you can see it going down across there. So I thought that was really interesting. And uh, before before I uh, shot this, I'd never heard of uh, tumbling satellites. If you're interested, I mean, we're going to have several other imaging sessions, so. Uh, I do a lot of going into deep sky objects as well, so I'll, I could show you how to turn this into this. <laughs> uh, something like this into this. Or uh, that into this. And so that's all shot uh, actually from my backyard in Marco, so ridiculous amount of light pollution, but I didn't let that stop. All right, folks, uh, why don't we give Ben uh, a little bit of a thank you here.